folks how are you this is take two 13 14 15 just checking the integrity of my recording hi it's been a crazy crazy day we just got through some uh, crazy storms here in the great northeast and uh that's what's going on right now i got my kraken hoodie on because uh, i think the yankee season's kind of over but you know hockey season got hockey season to look forward to right now well, first off, I'm Greg. This is Geek Cheese. How are you? This is Cheese Lake Baseball, and right now we're going to watch some quarterfinals action. I don't know uh, what this level of the finals is called, but this is a quarter, and I think this is semi, and then this is the finals. Um, or this is semi, this is quarter. This is, I don't know what it is. Either way, we're uh, working toward the uh, the championship game. Uh, let's recap briefly, and I'm going to look at the detailed bracket here of these, uh, these series because I want to look, uh, again, just briefly at what, what happened and what has transpired. So the Stilton Saucers obviously beat up the Mozzarella Maneaters. Um, those games were pretty close, though. If you take a look at the scores, you got 15 to 8 here. That's the big blowout game two. Other than that, you know, it's pretty close games, 4 to 2, 4 to 2, 4 to 3, 7 to 6. So the Saucers were just able to eke out some wins. Kind of the same thing with the uh, Provolone Prospectors, Cheddar Cherubs. The Cherubs beat up on the Prospectors, and those were kind of close games. The, again, with the exception of the 6 nothing blowout, they shut them out. 7-3 to three by me. Other, otherwise, I think those were some pretty close games. This series actually might be pretty close. There might be an evenly matched uh, teams here. The number 11 seed versus the number 3 seed. Uh, on the next tier here we have the Edom emeralds and the swiss cheese steamers the steamers of course won in six games over the emeralds i actually thought the emeralds were going to win but uh you know that's how it panned out um and these games you know there were a couple of uh pitching matchups i guess you could say that were pretty good uh across these series uh, you know low scoring game here two nothing emeralds come seven three but then there's a three to one nine to six five nothing it's you know not terribly high scoring games there's no real blowouts there i guess you could say the five nothing game maybe was a blowout but not really um some good pitching matchups i suppose on the uh next level here the ricotta regal beagles and the uh gorgonzola gothams um Yes, yeah, some, some close games here as well, but the Gothams uh, eventually do win this series. 12-4, uh, to 4, that's the big blowout. Again, just a lot of close games on this side. So um, the number seven seed in the Steamers and the number two seed in the Gothams. That should be an interesting matchup uh, to see. Um, yeah, it should be some interesting stuff. On this level of the, uh, or this area of the bracket, we have the Kraken won in seven games over the Gamblers. Um, this is kind of back and forth, honestly. These these games, nine to two, the Kraken got ahead, and then they take a seven to one, they take a four to two, they take uh, an eleven to five. So this team can hit, they can score runs. There were a lot of home runs, if I do recall, in this series. So um, I expect this to kind of be possibly a heavy hitting big blowout maybe kind of series because you look at the uh feta fiddlers and manchego mechanics mechanics won this series four to one you know they scored a lot of runs nine to four eleven to five and then oh, actually the last two games two to one two to one so i don't know uh, i i kind of think this one might be a heavy hitting series the next one uh in this tier is the brie boomerangs who lost to the Gorg uh, the uh, gouda giants um and you know those were some big scoring games there for the giants there's a 12 to 5 a 14 to 6 a 7 to 4 and 8 to 4 so they kind of just uh out, outdid them uh, uh in a bunch of ways and i think this is uh the, the, the giants are a good team so uh, i'm kind of eagerly watching them and seeing what is going to happen the first real and the you know the biggest maybe not surprise i guess surprise you know 16 seed facing off against the one seed's kind of unfair but uh the uh asiago aeroplanes they swept the uh pepper jack pipers and but not a lot of big scoring games there either they haven't we haven't seen them in a while they haven't popped off yet so 
Um, if they get hot, they got a lot of big bats in that lineup. They could um, they could really pop off and give the Giants a run for their money. But the Giants are really, really hot right now coming off those wins. So let's see what happens here. We're going to watch the first game in the quarterfinals here, though, folks. We got Stilton Saucers at the Cheddar Cherubs. Theo, Theo Sellers. Oh, my God. I can't talk today. Theo Sellers on the mound for the Saucers. He has an 0-0 record with a very high ERA versus Faye Faulkner. A 1-0 with a 0 ERA. So this should be an interesting game. And let's get right into it. There's a brief rundown and a brief recap. And I'm going to give myself some volume. Like I said, we just got over... I'm just slamming everything around here. We just got over some big storms here. So it's uh, the calm after the storm. My dad said they got 3 inches of rain in an hour. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Here we are at Lafayette Corner, the Extreme Contact Specialists versus the Extreme Speed Demons. And uh, Faye Faulkner on the mound. As Anson Caldwell leads it off for the Stilton Saucers. I don't have my stat sheets in front of me at all. It is what it is. And the first pitch is a strike from Faulkner. And that's a hit. Is that going to drop in? Nah. Esquivel is there. That's the first out of these quarterfinals. Let me find these stat sheets as Bria Bracketeer comes in. I know this probably sounds annoying if you're listening, but it is what it is. Faulkner, four-seamer cutter, slider, curveball, changeup. A lot of pitches in her arsenal. That one's hit quite well. Ooh. Chris Hooper with the leaping grab robs a home run, I think. So good on him. Chris Hooper. All right, who am I looking for? I don't even know who I'm looking for. There are the Cheddar Cherubs and the Stilton Saucers. That one is hit. That one's not coming back. That's going to get off the facade. It's a home run. Long ball here. 420-foot jack. Bautista's first home run and first RBI of the tournament. And that brings up Cannon Wilhelm. So interesting as the tugboat squeals in the background as Wilhelm hits one down into that possible weird triangle area. No, he didn't get that far. Out number three, but they get a homer. Folks, they get a homer off the bat of, I forget already who it was. Either way, they got a home run. Saucers are on the board first, one to nothing. Casey Giles steps in, or Giles. Giles Giles. Sellers out there on the mound. Ooh, Bracketeer, nice diving catch. Esquivel steps up now. 538 average for her. Three homers, seven RVIs. Having a great tournament. And it's that one. A hot shot over to. Peacock in the hot corner. That's out number two. Elliot Lyons stepping in. All right. Four-seamer slider curveball changeup for Sellers. And that is a base hit. Into the outfield. So a one-out, or a, sorry, a two-out base hit. It was a Worley Pittman. And who am I looking for? Teddy Sellers. Teddy to his friends, Theo in his professional life. Was a pretty good pitcher here for the Saucers in the last tournament. 1.12 ERA with two, two wins. They made it to the quarterfinals. They didn't do that last time, so this uh, team wants to prove themselves. Same could be said for the Cheddar Cherubs, who did not make it to the quarterfinals last time. That's a base hit into right field. And uh, we got two base runners now. Oh, for Chris Hooper, who made the brilliant leaping catch to rob the home run. And then there was a home run anyway, so it didn't matter. And that one is... 
not dropping in. Spencer gets it. And top of the second we go. Five, six, and seven do up for the Stilton Saucers. And so it's Colt Lowry. Three, what is it, 389 for him, yeah. Three, no. 379, 389. That's base hit up the middle. Love the uh, Cheddar Cherubs jerseys, kind of reminiscent of the Cleveland Guardians. We like that, and obviously. The uh, Saucers are reminiscent of the Houston Astros. Faulkner, more of a junk pitcher. Not really going to uh, wow you with her miles per hour. And down on strikes. That is first out. As Gabe Peacock steps in. Like I said, both these teams that want to prove something, they have uh, a lot of talent. They both handled their opponents quite well. Some tough opponents, too, who made it to, you know... Some of them at least made it to the uh, second round last time. Two and two now on Peacock with a runner. Good speed on first base. All right, that is a hit to Johns, to Lions, and to Moore. That is the 6-4-3 inning ending double play. I'll be Johns to lead it off. His first at bat of the quarter finals. I had some coffee earlier, but I needed it because I was falling asleep at work today. I'm trying not to drink as much coffee, folks. It's very, very difficult. That is hit high and far and gone. Where is that going to end up? Oh, my God. A second deck shot for Johns. I think that's his first homer and first RBI. 421-foot shot. Yes, first homer, first RBI of the whole entire tournament. It's only hitting like 200. And that makes this Cheddar Cherubs crowd very, very happy. As Wanda Moore steps in. 333 for her. All right, Sellers. Let's see if he can settle down or something. You know, I, I think there's something off with the Stilton Saucers jerseys. I think I just pinpointed it. I think the text should be blue. And that's a base hit into left field. I'm going to have to fix that in the middle in the, uh, the off season, in between tournaments. Blake Garrett steps in. He's the catcher. 077 for him. Good speed on the base pass. And they're going to check on Wanda Moore. Popped up. And... Boy, that carried a lot further than I thought it would. And no chance to advance the runner, so one out. Runner on first as Blankenship steps in. Francis. Francis. He does not look like a Francis. And that one is fouled away. Oh, and two. Now the one two. I don't know if they would have had him. He's still in base. I don't know if they would have had him. He's pretty good speed, but I don't know. Good throw, maybe. Not a really good arm behind the plate. Wilhelm doesn't have the greatest. Giles, 278 on the tourney. That one's fouled away. One and two. Two outs, runner on second. Fouled away. And again, and got him chasing high and outside. Ari Miller, Nash Schaefer, Anson Caldwell. That's eight, nine, and one to up here in the top of the third already. One, one. Two solo shots is what 
did it so far. Let me tell you, Ari Miller. No, no. Apologize. It's not Ari Miller. It's a guy with a red goatee like that. I think it's Nix Allen. It's been the bane of my existence in my uh, franchise mode that I play. Full count here. That's base out up the middle. So, leading it off with the base hit here, top of the third. That brings up Nash Schaefer. 308, one homer, and one RBI for him. So far in this tourney. That one's fouled away. Going away on vacation. And that gets fouled. Going away on vacation. I'm actually debating buying this on the Switch. But I've heard horror stories that it does not play well on the Switch. And that concerns me. I might just switch to... Super Mega Baseball 3. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. And that is over to Lions again. And ooh, they get the double play. 6-4-3. Inning ending double play once again. You know what I could do? I could play... Um, uh, I don't know, the game of the tugboat. I can't remember it now. Oh my god. I could play that though. Scour, Scourge, Scrounge, whatever it's called. Drift. I think it's called Drift. High and far and going, going off the wall. Lowry plays it well off the wall. Fires in and safe. So it's a double here. That brings up Elliot Lyons. He's one for one with a single so far today. Runner on second. Amazing speed on second base. Neglected to say it's 2 3 4 do up here for the home team Cheddar Cherubs. This is a good spot, too. Good speed on the base pass. The 1 2 goes and easily stolen. Easily stolen bag. It's the strikeout and stolen base. As Pittman steps up 1 for 1 with a single. Man, that'd be cool to see a stolen, like, steal of home. That'd be wild. And they have the infield playing in, and that's a good call. Two outs now. Runner still at third. And Chris Hooper up. Hooper hitting 308. I feel like not a lot, uh, not a lot of attention has been paid to this. Uh, I almost said Guardians. This Cherubs lineup. Ooh, a high and outside call it strike. Full count. And Bracketeer. Do they get him at first? No, they don't. It's an infield hit and an RBI. And that gives the Cheddar Cherubs a 2-1 to one lead. As John steps in, he jacked a homer's first time up. Runner goes again and easily thrown out this time. But they get another run. Two to one, the Cheddar Cherubs lead it here going into the top of the fourth. Two, three, and four do up for the visiting Stilton Saucers. I do enjoy the Stilton Saucers logo. It's one of my favorite logos I've ever made. The Cheddar Cherub logo, I like it, but it bothers me. There is a strikeout. Les Batista steps in. He had a homer. Let's take a look here at, uh, at Faulkner. 36 pitches. Not really laboring too much out there, I suppose, in the fourth. That makes mind here, actually, is that is a grounder over to Moore. She's going to toss the Faulkner for the second out. And I want to know what the Yankees are playing. I forgot they're in Chicago, and they started a little bit later, so we're going to have to watch that then. It looked like they were winning, but I don't want to... I don't know what I saw. I thought I saw 2 nothing, but I could have also saw 2 as the inning. 
Who knows what's going on? It's a dumpster fire over there. One and two to Wilhelm. That's a foul ball. And another foul. And a ball in the dirt. And there he is. Strike out. And then Wilhelm. Okay, Faulkner's doing pretty good out there on the mound. As Sellers who waltz himself back up on the bump. Six, seven, eight, due up for the home team, Cheddar Cherubs. And Sellers, 54 pitches, not as economical, I suppose, as Faulkner, but he'll have that. Variety is the spice of life. And that is a base hit into the gap. It's going to be easy. Oh, no, they're not going to go. Wow, okay. They're not going to test the arm of the center fielder. And perhaps, does he not run well? He runs all right. I don't know why they didn't send him. All right, Wanda Moore up now. With runner on second. And that is a base hit up the middle. So two on, nobody out. Here in the bottom of the fourth, the Cheddar Cherubs look to add some insurance runs. Like Garrett steps in. I think he popped out his first time up. Ooh, the Steeler trade is active. Didn't even notice that. Ball way outside. Seller's accuracy is not good right now. Ooh, and a bunt. We see a bunt. Are we going to... Ooh, no, they can't. They tried to turn the double play. Good heads up by uh, Sellers there to try to get the double play. They can't turn it. They do get one out. But that puts the runners at the corners. That terrible. Keeps the double play in order. As Blankenship steps up. Ball in the dirt. Good block by Wilhelm. And there's strike two. One and two. And down on strikes goes Blankenship. As Casey Giles, top of the order, comes in. He's 0 for 2. And let's see what he does here. He just line. He didn't line out. I thought he lined out. What was Spencer doing? All right, Greg Farley's coming in. What was he doing out there? He could have easily caught that. He caught it on a hop. It, that, so that scores the run, puts runners at first and second, and that's a base hit up the middle. And they're not going to test the arm. So now base is loaded. And Elliott lines up. He's one for two. Been struggling at the plate mightily here for this Cherubs ball club. He was a 312 hitter in the first tournament. And the pitch. There's a strike. Two and one now. And there's a strike again. Two and two. And ripped. But Spencer is there this time. I don't know what happened there. Like, what happened that he couldn't catch that on the fly? It was so weird. Caught everything else in his shoestring. This brings up Lowry here in the top of the fifth. Three to one now. The Cheddar Cherubs lead it. And like I said, the, these games could be low scoring affairs. What a blanket ship across the diamond out number one. Spencer. Spencer steps in. Could be low scoring affairs. We'll, we'll see what happens. And that is a strike. One and one, and two and one now on Spencer. Hit high and far. Is that going to get off the big wall? Yes, off the hitter's eye. And it's a double for Spencer. A one out double. So the Saucers have a runner in scoring position as Gabe Peacock steps up. Ball outside. Let's take a look at Faulkner. 55 pitches. So, I mean, she's still pretty economical. About half a tank of gas left. Maybe a little less. 
Not bad, not bad at all. Base hit through the right side, so puts runners on the corners here for the Stilton Saucers, and then they're threatening with Ari Miller up. He's one for one with a single. And that's base hit through the left side. So the Saucers get a run back here. It's three to two. All right, still only one out. And that chases Faulkner. That chases Faulkner from the game. Here's Pooch Jennings. And that one's fouled away. Jennings, 3.38 ERA in the tournament so far. 2.25 whip. That's not good. High. Carrying. And gone. Nash Schaefer. A three run jack. 373 foot shot. Second homer, fourth RBI of the tournament. And that gives the Stilton Saucers the 5 to 3 lead. Hanson Caldwell steps up 0 for 2. Wow. Okay. It's a ball game now. It is a ball game now. And oh, off of uh, Lions Glove. And gets to first safely. Three of Bracketeer steps in, open for two. Yeah, Very good speed on the base pass here for the Saucers, and they're going to check on the runner. The saucers making a comeback. I forget. I forget who eliminated the Saucers in the first tournament. That is hit up or up the middle. Oh my gosh. Through the right side. Less Batista steps in. Now. One for two. A homer and RBI. Jennings, four seamer slider, curveball, velocity and junk kind of guy. Wild thing though. Wild thing. Two and one. And now the 3-1 to Batista. Hit high, got under it. The warning track, oh my god, no he didn't. Okay. Pittman puts it away. He, he like made that motion like he couldn't see it or something. Like he was gonna go over the wall. I was about to flip the shit. About to flip this table. I was like, no way that is a home run. They juice these balls here in Super Mario Baseball 4. All right, Wilhelm. Kenny Wilhelm has his catcher's gear on in his photo. He's not the most social guy. Also looks kind of mean. That is strike three. Four runs in the top of the fifth. The Stilton Saucers now lead five to three. Whirly Pittman steps in one for two. It'll be four, five, and six. The heart of the lineup here for the home team, Cheddar Cherubs. And let's see if Farley, I think Farley's going to give way to somebody else out of this pen real quick. Two and two on Pittman. And right at Bracketeer. Super steps in, one for two, single, and an RBI. Well, maybe they'll keep Farley in for this. Lefty on lefty matchup. Yep, specialist is activated. That's popped up. Been editing some player names for the franchise that I will be playing at some point. Schaefer knocks it down, flips to Farley, and that's the second out. And Arthur John steps in, two for two. Home run and a single. So that's been that's been fun. I've been trying to create some really good sounding baseball names. And that's over to Schaefer again out number three. No who, who I thought always had a great baseball name was Chad Curtis. Chad Curtis can only play baseball or maybe be like a quarterback 
for the Denver Broncos or Green Bay Packers or something. I take that back as that's a one pitch, one out. Chad Curtis would actually be the quarterback for a college team. He wouldn't make it to the pros. He'd be a quarterback for a college team. Who do we got here? This is Spencer with one out here in the sixth. One and two. And down on strikes, so Pooch Jennings. Get some strikeouts here, Get some outs. Peacock steps in, one for two with a single. As the steamboat goes off again. Should be third out over to Blankenship. And out number three, quick. Quick top half of the sixth, seven, eight, nine, bottom third of the lineup duo here for the Cherubs. Wanda Moore, two for two with two singles for her. And that's a strike. Five to three. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh man, I thought that was gonna hit her. Very high fly. I don't know what I just heard. I don't know what I just heard in this room. But that was a high fly pop up, and uh, that was off the top of the wall. She just missed a homer by like a foot. So Moore gets a, a double out of that, and that brings up Blake Garrett. That's a pop up, and that should be an easy out, and it is. All right, so Francis Blankenship comes in. He's over to two. Blankenship, a bench piece for them last time around. Didn't really hit a lot. But yeah, two at bats, no hits. Getting a start today, though. This very important game. And boy, they have him shaded or something. Sneaks through the right side for a base hit. So that's putting runners at the corners. Casey Giles up. One for three, single and an RBI for him. All right, Reagan Brady comes in. Runners at the corners. One out here, bottom of the sixth. And uh, Squibber down the line. They try to turn two, they can't. And the Cherubs get a run back. It's 5-4 now. With two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Esquivel's been hot. Swinging a hot stick. Two for three. They catch him running. Oh. Go to the top of the seventh. That could have been a big... That momentum could have kept going for the Cherubs, but that caught stealing just sucked the air out of the sails. I mean, they did get a run back, five to four. Saucers still lead it here in the top of the seventh. That one is hit, and who's gonna catch it? Oh, Cooper catches it. There's like a little Bermuda Triangle of not good happening right there. But they get the out. Matt Schaefer up. He's a home run today. That's all that really matters. Pooch Jennings still out there on the mound, too, by the way. He is going to get pulled soon. His stamina is going down quite fast. He's just a reliever. I was checking to see if he was a, a reliever. Uh, reliever starter, uh, kind of like a long man. His stamina is actually quite well. I mean, like it's uh, the stamina is, is pretty good for a reliever in Super Mega Baseball. All right, that keeps the inning alive here. Caldwell with the single for the Saucers. They would like a little bit of insurance instead of the one run lead that they have as Bracketeer steps in. One for three with a single. All right, Pooch Jennings out. Jenkins is in. And 
And that is popped up and into the dugout. And 97 mile an hour fastball for a strike 0 and 2. That one is. Oh no, Blankenship catches it. So, last licks here for the Cheddar Cherubs. Can they tie it? Can they come back and win? Let's see what happens. We have two, three, and four do up. Esquivel will lead things off here, bottom of the seventh against Reagan Brady. Ninety-nine of the gun for Brady. A high fly pop up down the right field line. That is an out. Elliot Lyon steps in now. One for three with a single. I don't know why he's the number three hitter. He's not hitting a lot. He's not very speedy. I don't know why. Doesn't make sense. Two and one. And at a ball, three and one. Soft grounder over to Miller. And the second out. And Pittman steps in. One for three with a single. Trying to keep things alive here for the Cheddar Cherubs in front of their home crowd. A packed house here in Lafayette Corner. And quickly 0-2. Wow, this is a tough take. Down and strikes it goes. And still the Saucers win the first game of this semifinal. The quarterfinal. I keep calling it the wrong thing. 5, 10, and 0 to 4, 12, and 0. A lot of strikeouts in the saucer side. Seven strikeouts. Didn't realize that. And eh, just a smattering of hits throughout. Good day for Miller. Good day for Caldwell. Home run, of course, coming from Batista and Schaefer. On the Cheddar Cherub side, we got, boy, good days for Esquivel, for Johns, Moore. Of course, Johns had the home run. And yeah, no walks, five strikeouts for them. So Sellers will get the no decision. Farley will pick up the win. Brady with the save, third of the tournament. Faulkner does take the loss. Top three players, Schaefer, Johns, and more. So that's the first game here, folks, of the quarterfinals in the bag with the Stilton Saucers leading the charge here. Take the one nothing lead over the Cheddar Cherubs. This could be a very interesting series. I did say I think it could be a lot of co close games, so that's what this one was. Nail biter right, to, right down to the end. But anyway, that is it for me, folks. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you know, subscribe, share, hit the bell. We've got lots of videos posting. And uh, now that we're in the, sem the quarterfinals, jeez, I'm going to keep doing that. Now that we're in the quarterfinals, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's, it's getting heated up. All right, that's it for me, though, folks. Thanks so much for watching, and we will check you guys again next time here on Geek Cheese on YouTube. See ya. Bye.